Hello. In the last session, we discussed about the role of e-business in business, types of information system, and trends in IS. In this session, let us begin our discussion with the concepts from the first module, that is managerial challenges of information technology, system concept, and components of information system. Let's discuss about managerial challenges of information technology. Well, information system and their technology must be managed to support the business strategies, business process, organization structure, and culture of a business enterprise. Yes, the goal of many companies today is to maximize their customer and business value by using IT to support their employees in implementing cooperative business process with the customers and suppliers and others. This figure shows various challenges and opportunities that business managers face in managing IS and technologies to meet business goals. Next topic of discussion is success and failure with IT. Success of an IS should not be measured by its efficiency in terms of minimizing cost, time, and use of information resources. Yes, success should be measured by the effectiveness of IT in supporting an organization's business strategies, enabling its business process. Next topic of discussion is developing IS solutions. Let's imagine. You are a business professional. You will be responsible for proposing or developing new or improved uses of information technology for your company. As a business manager, you will frequently manage the development efforts of information system specialists and other business end users. Figure shows developing IS solutions to business problems can be implemented and managed as a multi process or cycle. During development process, end users and information specialists design IS applications based on the analysis of the business requirements of an organization. Along with this, other activities are also included such as investigating the economic or technical feasibility of a proposed applications, learning how to use software required implementing the new system, making improvements to maintain the business value of a system. Next topic of discussion is challenges of ethics and IT. Here we listed about some of the ethical responsibilities. First one, what uses of IT might be considered improper, irresponsible or harmful to the individual or to the society. Second one, what is the proper business use of the internet and an organization's IT resources? And the third one is, what does it take to be a responsible end user of IT? And the last one is, how can you protect yourself from computer crime and other risks of IT? This figure shows examples of some ethical challenges that must be faced by business managers who implement major applications of information technology. Next topic of discussion is system concepts. Yes, we have used the term system more than 100 times already and we use it thousand more before we are done. As we discussed at the beginning of the session, a system is defined as a set of interrelated component with a clearly defined boundaries working together to achieve a common set of objectives by accepting inputs and producing outputs in an organized transformation process. Yes, we can see many examples of system can be found in physical and biological science, in modern technology and in human society. Best example for physical system is sun and its planets and for biological system is the human body and for the technological system is the oil refinery system. 
now you can understand the definition of a system in the field of information system that is a system is a group of interrelated components with clearly defined boundary working together a common goal by accepting inputs and producing outputs in an organized transformation process such a system is also called as dynamic system dynamic system has three basic interacting components or functions first one input input involves capturing and assembling elements that enter the system to be processed second one processing this involves transformation process that converts input into output and the third one is output this involves transferring elements that have been produced by a transformation process to their ultimate destination well the concept the system concept becomes even more useful by including two additional components that is feedback and control this is also called as cybernetic system that is self monitoring and self regulating now let's discuss about feedback and control feedback feedback is data about the performance of a system for example data about sales performance are feedback to a sales manager and you can take one more example that is data data about the speed attitude altitude and direction of aircraft are feedback to the aircraft's pilot next we'll discuss about control control involves monitoring and evaluating feedback to determine whether a system is moving toward the achievement of its goal let us take an example to support this concept a common cybernetic system is a home temperature control system the thermostat accepts the desired room temperature as input and sends a voltage to open the gas valve which fires a furnace the resulting hot air goes into room and the ter thermometer in the thermostat provides a feedback to shut down the entire system when a temperature is dis reached to the desired level similarly a business also has many control activities for example computers may monitor and control manufacturing process accounting procedure help control the financial systems data entry displays provide control of data entry activities and sales quotes and sales bonus attempt to control the sales performance okay next we'll discuss about other system characteristics if a system is one of the components of a larger system then it is called as a subsystem of larger system and the larger system becomes its environment several system may share the same environment okay there are two types of system first one is a open system it is a system that interacts with the other system in its environment this figure illustrate the concept of open system here it shows the system exchanges inputs and outputs with its environment and the second one is an adaptive system it is a system that has ability to change itself or its environment to serve next topic of discussion is components of information system yes now we are ready to apply system concept we already learned to help us better understand how an information system works for example we have said that an information system is a system that accept the data resources as inputs and process them into information product as outputs in order to support these activities or tasks what system components or and activities are involved this figure shows an information system model that ex expresses a fundamental conceptual framework 
for the major components and activities of information systems. An information system depends on the resources of people, that is end users and IS specialists. And also it depends on hardware, such as machines and media. And also it is depends on software, that is programs and procedures. Finally, data, data and knowledge bases. And networks, that is communication media and network support to perform input processing and output storage and control activities that transfer the data resources into information products. Before we conclude the session, following are the some major points that we discussed. The first one is managerial challenges of information technology. Next one is the system components. And the last one is components of an information system. Briefing for the next session. In our next session, we will discuss information system resources, information system activities. See you in the next session. Thank you. Happy learning. Thank you.